Welcome, Alex. Thanks so much for joining me on the show. Thanks, Sally. And thanks, Sally promised beforehand, no insulting me. So No insult. Well, I've known Alex since 2008. Uh, we were much younger than both of us and had brown <laughs> hair instead of gray. And uh, he's basically, I was saying, my younger brother uh, in that annoying way. So, <laughs> so <laughs> sorry, listeners. I'll, we'll, we'll get on. We'll get to the point now. <laughs> So, all right. So the topic of our discussion today is, uh, can people ask for more scholarship money? Like how, you know, how does it work to negotiate for merit? Is there ever a downside to doing so? That Let's, let's dive right in. Yeah, absolutely. So the answer is you can negotiate merit in some cases. Mm -hmm. So it certainly isn't across the board. It isn't with every school. There are some schools that are more likely to negotiate, some schools that are less likely to negotiate, or as they'd prefer to call it, reconsider. Uh, and then there are just some schools that just aren't going to do it at all. Uh, and it's not with every student. So it's, it definitely depends on sort of your place in the pecking order. And I'm sure we'll dive more into that in a minute. But to answer your second question, as far as the downside, really, I, there's not much in the way of downside. Uh, the worst thing they're going to do is say no. They're not going to say, hey, suddenly you're not accepted and we're getting rid of the scholarship we've already offered you. Uh, the worst case is you are where you are today and that's where you are. So in general, the, as long as it's done appropriately in a professional way, there's really no downside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I've given, I've told you before, when I worked at the University of Chicago, um, there was a student who came to see me with his father um, and he'd actually gotten a small scholarship, but his father called me up, tried to get one of our full scholarships. And I said, we we don't negotiate. His scholarship is what it is. Mm -hmm. And then the dad even brought his son. They showed up at the office. I don't know, I guess, hoping that in person they right. would be so impressive that I would fold or they could talk to someone else. And the answer was the same. We don't negotiate. It doesn't matter who you talk to. Sure. They will tell you the same thing. But I didn't then go and, as you said, yank his initial scholarship. Right. In fact, I, I didn't even take his name. I was just like, we don't negotiate. Right. You know, and, and he it was a little weird to show up at the office, but it wasn't actually that weird when you think about the stress of paying for college. So I was sympathetic, but it, the answer was the same. But I did. It didn't hurt them. You know, because as you said, they were not inappropriate. They were polite. Absolutely. You know? So. And if we had talked to them, I might have suggested that uh, he try to schedule an appointment as opposed to just showing up. Because yes. there is some upside to, you know, going in person. And it's much more difficult for Sally to say no in person than for her, for her to say no uh, over email or on the phone or something. Yeah. Like that. Well, and the fact is that, yeah, scheduling an appointment might have made a difference at a school like Whittier, right? At Chicago, right. it was kind of like, look, people are trying to beat down the door sure. here. This isn't going to help you. Right. But you've remained polite, so everything's fine, you know? Right. So, um, so, but that, that actually leads pretty well to the next point, which is who should a family contact when they're trying to negotiate? So that's a really good question, and it depends a little bit from school to school, but in general, most merit offers, uh, and if we're talking about purely scholarship dollars here, purely merit here, and not need-based financial aid, if we're talking about purely merit, generally speaking, those offers are coming from the Office of Admissions. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're just looking at merit aid, I would most likely contact either your admissions rep, or if you ha have somebody you have a connection with, certainly, if there's a letter where you did receive a, a scholarship offer already and whoever's on that letter. And then, you know, in the last case uh, scenario would be to contact the general admissions office and hope they forward you on uh, to the right person. But certainly if you have a connection, that's great. Even going on to the school's website to see who your admissions rep would be. Mm -hmm. and establishing that uh, connection would be a, a certainly a really good start. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it can really help. This, by the way, might be a reason to be in touch with your admission rep, get have an interview, um, things like that. And I'm just going to go back to Whittier again. Like, yeah, the person, if you wanted, if you were hoping to get a bigger scholarship, starting with me would have been the right idea when when you you know when I worked at Whittier College, and I'm sure that would be the case now too. So, with you, was that 
you, they were establishing a relationship with you uh, and then you were sort of their advocate. Exactly, you, exactly. Absolutely. I was the, I was in charge of multiple high schools in the Los Angeles area. And if they set up an appointment, if I was in the office, if I wasn't traveling for recruitment, it would be with me. And, you know, parents, when they called, they'd be put through to me. And that was absolutely... You know, and, and that I think is something it's important to note for families, like when you're applying to these institutions that admit that are not highly rejective, but that actually right. admit students in right. high <laughs> percentages, you actually can get to know someone and then that can help you at every stage in the process. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then um, what about like, so we've kind of talked about, obviously you want to be polite, but what are some specifics about the approach? Um, you know, what are some of your suggestions there? Sure. So I wouldn't uh, start by scheduling an appointment. I wouldn't start by going into the office. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even start by picking up the phone. What I'd start is putting things on paper. Uh, mm -hmm. Because generally speaking, if they are going to, in the end, give you more money, they're going to want some details here. They're going to kind of like make your case to me. Mm -hmm. And we're going to document what your case is. So I like to start with an, an email to the office uh, or whoever you're working with. <clears throat> and I kind of like a family approach. This is from, you know, the student, but maybe the parents too. Mm -hmm. uh, the student has a lot of the insights into why they love that school, but the parents have more insight probably into the financials. So I first like to tell the school, this is this is where I want to be, right? If, if we make the financials work here, I'm going to deposit. Mm -hmm. Schools really want to hear that we are going to get this student if we give them more money. They don't want to feel like they're battling for third or fourth place. Mm -hmm. And only if we have the best offer, is there any chance that we get this student? They want to know that they are the school and we just mm -hmm. need to work out uh, the financial details. So I love the school. Maybe a couple of reasons why you love the school. And then the next paragraph would be anything new that you would have put on your admissions application today if you were applying today. So if your GPA has been boosted, if your test scores have improved, if you won any awards, anything that somebody like you, Sally, if they were reviewing mm -hmm. uh, your admissions application would say, oh, that's interesting to note. And that would have been good to know back in November, but now we have that information today. Mm -hmm. So any new information from an academic or extracurricular standpoint uh, is a good thing. And then it's competing offer time. Ideally, mm -hmm. you have competitive schools uh, that are considered to be true competitors of this institution you're trying to negotiate with. Uh, and you have some offers that either make that school less expensive or maybe a, just a better scholarship offer. Uh, and I like to list two or three schools out if you have them mm -hmm. uh, and say, you know, we realize your time is valuable. This is a big decision for us. Finances are obviously playing a role. We've been really fortunate to get these other offers. We're hoping we can close the gap. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I really like what you said about making it clear that money is what's holding you back, but otherwise you love the school, right? right? Like it's it's kind of interesting to me how sometimes people think that somehow insulting the school, like sure. I'm doing you a favor by looking. Yeah. I'm like, well, please go elsewhere then, because right. this is not what I want in the dorm with my students who are thrilled to be here. <laughs> you guys aren't used car salespeople. Right. This is not like, you know, hey, you know, I'm tr I'm doing anything I can to put you in this car. I don't care how much you hate mm -hmm. it. It's mm -hmm. not like that. The schools right. generally want you to want to be there. Right. They want you to succeed. They want you to be there for four years. They want you to graduate. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yes, yeah, making that mutual beneficial connection. Exactly. Exactly. So is there a, a, a kind of a best time to negotiate scholarships, like a preferred time? I would say as soon as you have all the leverage you're going to have. So when the majority of your other offers have come in uh, would be the time to approach it. And so that could be, you know, in years other than this year, uh, this year's, you know, been very, a very weird year, but generally it could be as early as December or mm -hmm. January. And people say, geez, that seems so early. Uh, and my thought is, well, what if they do truly have a limited budget for mm -hmm. these requests? I'd prefer to be on the early end of that budget because we have seen in the past that even if you're on the early end and they say no, well, as May 1st gets closer and as their numbers maybe aren't quite adding up to where they hoped they might be, they might come back 
and say, oh, we've reconsidered and here's a little bit extra. So mm -hmm. I'd rather be too early than too late. So as soon as you have the leverage, so for a lot of families right now, they're kind of finalizing all the leverage that they have. Mm -hmm. uh, got most of their offers. And I know this year has been weird from a financial mm -hmm. aid point in the FAFSA and all of those things. Mm -hmm. Because we're talking simply about scholarships, this is outside of that a right. little bit. Uh, so we can move forward now. Would, mm -hmm. would case. Yeah, I mean, it really seems like as soon as you're admitted, if there's a shortfall, start the communication process. Sure. Yep. Yeah. And, and, you know, you might not have offers from other schools then, but just letting them know, hey, listen, we, I, I really want to come here. We're working out the financials. Maybe I'll come back to you. Mm -hmm. uh, just sort of setting that stage, stage and establishing, hey, I should be on the lookout. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, actually, again, talking about Whittier, one of the ways that I was able to get a higher scholarship for one of my students is I went to the person in charge and I said, look, I think he'll attend if we just boost it this much. <laughs> right. And I was like, I really think he's going to deposit. And and so they were like, you know what? OK, we want him, you know, and, uh, you know, and he was a great kid, but he wasn't like. Sure. A huge recruit or something like that. He was just a good right. kid. But I'm like, right. we can get him. And uh, and yeah, and he came and it was wonderful. In, in, you know, sort of kind of piggybacking off of that, if the letter isn't successful or you don't hear back, it's not bad to put on the letter, hey, I'm going to reach out or mm -hmm. my mom and dad are going to reach out in a couple of weeks to see if there's been any kind of resolution and let whoever is the best person to make that communication reach out, but be ready to deposit. There have mm -hmm. certainly been cases out there where the admissions office says, all right, great, we can do this, but we're really going to need you to deposit. So be mm -hmm. ready to make that commitment mm -hmm. uh, when you make the phone call. In the letter, you don't have to be ready to make that commitment. But if you make a phone call, just be ready to say, hey, listen, I can put a credit card down right now and mm -hmm. make the phone calls. Uh, mm -hmm. If, in fact, we're going to settle the rest of the financial details. Yeah, good. All right. So in, I don't know if you can answer this question in like one quick minute, uh, but do you see a change in how schools are approaching negotiations in this economy? <laughs> I think that's a loaded question. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't seen, we certainly haven't seen it yet, but I am curious because I think public school, and you tell me, Sally, public schools, especially flagship public institution applications, seem to be trending uh, on the upward direction. I think that those schools are going to see many more enrollment this year as people are uncertain about where the economy is. And mm -hmm. so that's sort of a guaranteed, we know what the price is going to be for a lot mm -hmm. of students. So I think some of those private colleges that might consider those schools to be competitors might be saying, we need to, we need to kind of step up our financial game here. Uh, so I certainly could see that happening. We saw mm -hmm. this happen uh, several years ago, uh, maybe 10 years ago when the economy was downturning a little bit too. Private schools were more willing to offer more money because they prefer to fill seats with mm -hmm. less money than leave those seats empty. Yeah. But in any case... I think we can close out with this. You can always ask. Yep. No absolutely. downside to asking. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Alex. Thanks, Allie. All right. And thank you to Charlie Murphy and Kurt Isaacson. Um, join us next week when we'll be getting an update from the experts at the test prep agency, Arbor Bridge, about what is happening with the SAT and discussing when it might make sense to appeal your need-based, not merit, but need-based financial aid package. And finally, remember, you don't have to listen to our shows live. Every show is accessible 24-7 on Voice America. You can also download every show for free on Amazon Music or iTunes. Um, if you want to watch us on video, you can go to our blog posts on blog.getintocollege.com. And don't forget, we're here every Thursday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Mm -hmm.